I'm already thinking what I would do with all this money. One victim wrote in a letter response to psychic Mary Duval. My wife would not have to work anymore and would drive a newer car. The letter continued, we could install air conditioning in our house. At the bottom of the letter, the victim wrote, I forgot, a good amount of this money would go to the bank. This is an example of the response that someone would write after receiving a letter from Mary Duval. Her name and face was at the front and center of probably the biggest scam involving the most people ever. This psychic scam has scammed money from millions of people around the world. Investigators found out that this scam has made more than $200 million from victims in just the US and Canada alone. Just who was the real mastermind behind this massive scam? Did the psychic Mary Duval even exist? Just how did this scam run for decades? A typical unsuspecting victim would receive a letter in the mail. To them, it looked like a personal handwritten letter. What a lot of people that replied would have in common was desperation. Most of the time, they're elderly people suffering from debilitating illnesses. Sometimes they're people in debt struggling to get their life back together. The scam is as simple as it gets. Millions of people would receive letters that made a bold claim. It promised them that a French psychic named Mary Duval had the secret secrets to turn their lives around. And all they need to do is send in money, often around 40 bucks for her help. Of course, most people just threw away the letters, but for those people who were vulnerable, it was a different story. The massive success is because of the letter's ability to take advantage of emotionally and financially vulnerable people. To them, the letter looks like it was specifically written to them and them alone. The scammers zeroed in on potential victims by buying lists of targeted demographics from data brokers that sell this information. The list contained many personal details such as names, addresses, birth dates, and scammers can easily deduce other likely personal details from this data. Sometimes they also place ads in newspapers disguised as a research study and promise participants that they could end up winning money in a sweepstake. They'll ask readers very specific personal questions, such as for their time of birth or their favorite TV show. And because the scammers would turn around and use this information on the very person they're surveying in the letters they send, it'll look as if a real psychic has written them a letter. This is what was brilliant about the scam. Having that information increased the amount of correspondence. These letters would sometimes appear to be from well-known psychics. Marie Duval is the most popular psychic used. Patrick Guerin was another psychic who was supposed supposedly writing the personalized letter. But of course, the scammers were just sending nearly identical letters with personal details swapped out to tens of thousands of people each week. So when one of their victims would actually reply to one letter, the scammer would send even more letters asking for more money. The money was supposed to be for supposedly unique and supernatural objects and personalized astrological services and studies. But obviously, the objects were just cheap, mass-produced plastic ornaments. People were at least still getting something for their money sometimes in this scam. As for the astrological studies, they were just completely ignored. In some replies, Marie would go ahead and introduce her psychic friend Patrick, who would then send his own letters, offering even more good fortune and seeking even more money. And a lot of letters would then ask for more personal information, along with the payments, of course. And some targeted people would even get requests, such as photos of themselves or even even locks of hair. According to a deep investigation by CNN, tens of thousands of letters were sent out per month. It adds up to millions of letters per year in the US alone. Some of the letters included such things as fake coffee cup stains and little notes written on the side to make them look more realistic. So who was Mary Duval? Was she actually a real person? Some people speculated that she was a made up person, while other people were adamant that she was completely real and enjoying her retirement in the south of France. Other people were absolutely convinced she was the mastermind of the scam. Was she actually part of the giant scam? Even the US government has not been able to track her down. Government officials typically struggle with international cases because they don't have jurisdiction outside their borders, rendering them powerless. The International Consumer Protection and Enforcement Network described Duval as, quote, probably fictitious character. Organization officials led an effort to shut down her ads 
cards and letters in nine countries. No one seemed to know where Marie Duval was. However, a couple of journalists claimed to have actually interviewed her. An Australian radio station supposedly interviewed Duval back in early 2000. They didn't ask any questions with the scam accusations that surrounded her. Instead, Duval spent the roughly 15-minute interview simply talking up using her supposed psychic abilities in an effort to help people. CNN reported that Belgian journalist Jan van Glenendonk interviewed a woman claiming to be Marie Duval, asking some more demanding questions. According to him, she admitted that she did not sign the letters herself, but defended the business. Who was it that was actually sending the letters? There's no way the scam was the work of just one person with the massive volume of letters involved. Back in 2014, the U.S. government had had enough. They were tired of Americans getting scammed by some psychic named Marie Duval. The Department of Justice filed a lawsuit against her looking to stop the mail operations. They also named Patrick Guerin in the lawsuit. Investigators found that the letters originated from a small Canadian company called Infogest Direct Marketing. What Infogest would do was send large batches of letters all over the U.S. and Canada before they actually individually mailed out letters to their targets. This was an obvious attempt to evade authorities who had tried to shut down the letters before. For example, this was the path for one particular batch of letters. Infogest would first contract out a company to print the letter. The letters then were shipped across the Canadian border by the same hired company to Albany, New York. And that's where the letters were mailed out individually in batches of as many as 50,000 letters at a time. When people would write a reply, the responses were sent to a U.S. or Canadian address. However, the addresses were just to commercial mailboxes run by a Hong Kong-based company called Destiny Research Center. At the mailbox locations, the response letters were bundled and sent to a completely different company called Data Marketing Group in Long Island, New York. This company was in charge of processing payments, and they directed another company to send out the cheap ornaments that people sent payments for. As you can tell, there were plenty of companies companies used to run the operation. However, most likely, these companies were probably just shell companies that were all owned by the same group of individuals. While the payments were small, with the sheer number of people, the total amount of money added up to millions of dollars. Data Marketing Group allegedly processed as much as $500,000 every two weeks. Now, what about the personal responses and personal items people would send? According to the Department of Justice, the company simply just threw it away. And the people that sent responses were then marked off in a database to be sent new letters, again asking for more money. The creators of this scam were looking for repeat lifetime victims. In late 2014, the Department of Justice shut down the ability to send letters by both Data Marketing Group and Infogest Direct Marketing. After six long years, the U.S. government was finally able to extradite a Canadian man named Patrice Runner from Spain in 2020. Runner was charged by the Department of Justice with 18 counts of mail and wire fraud, conspiracy to commit mail and wire fraud, and conspiracy to commit money laundering. They accused him of being the mastermind of a decades-long psychic mail fraud scheme from 1994 all the way until November 2014. The U.S. government was able to locate and charge two of Runner's co-conspirators, Maria Thanos and Philip Lett in 2018. They pleaded guilty in June of 2018 of conspiracy to commit mail fraud. Runner was able to use a series of shell companies to hide his personal involvement in the scam. He was actually indicted earlier in October 2018, and he was arrested in Ibiza in April of 2019. The government was able to return more than $200,000 worth of cash and money order payments sent in by nearly 6,000 victims. These were the recovered envelopes with funds that had yet to be processed by the scammers. Of course, the vast majority of victims have not received any money back. And even if more money is recovered, it'll be extremely difficult to figure out how to distribute the money properly to the people scammed. But all this doesn't answer whether or not Marie Duval was involved, or if she even is a real person. Surprisingly, Marie Duval is a real person, as found out by CNN in their investigation behind the scams. And she was a renowned psychic. But is she the real mastermind? Marie Duval's real name is Maria Carolina Gamba. Duval was the name she picked up from her second marriage. 
She was able to build a growing reputation as a psychic throughout the 1970s and 1980s while doing consultations and writing horoscopes in newspaper columns. Was Duval actually the mastermind? Supposedly, according to Marie's sister, it was in the mid-90s when Marie sold the rights to the name she had created to herself, Marie Duval. She entered into a contract with a group of people who were supposed to use her name to promote the sale of astrology charts. And her sister claimed that anything that happened afterwards did not have anything to do with her. But apparently, the people behind the operation changed the business model. And that's when all the letters in her name began. And the people who were in on the scam sold off the scam to other scammers. Patrice Runner wasn't the original scammer who ran the Marie Duval psychic scheme. And because the scammers kept on selling off the business, it was one major factor why the scam was able to keep going for so long. CNN was able to track down Marie Duval's son. He claimed that his mother was very upset about the letters, but there was nothing that she could do since she signed away her name. But what about the times when she defended the letters? He said she had signed non-disclosure agreements that prevented her from disparaging the business in any way. And she wasn't able to use her Marie Duval name to do business anymore. But still, she received royalties and payments from the scam. And that was the money she had lived on. Filed business records show that she had been the sole shareholder of a Swiss company called Astroforce. And in 2008, Duval had received nearly $200,000 when the company dissolved in the same year. This was concrete, clear evidence that she had been directly, or at the very least, indirectly involved with the letters. Was Marie Duval actually actively involved in this giant scam that involved millions of people? Or was she actually a victim from the real masterminds of the scam and forced into accepting the dirty money? Here's what's next. 